Hi, thanks for joining me. I'm Martin Castine. I am a portrait and landscape photographer living in London. In this video, I'm going to be taking you out with the Canon 5D Mark II and the 1635 F4 IS. I'm going to be sharing my thought process as I take pictures. We're going to be doing a sunset forest shoot. I was really happy with two or three of the pictures that I took here and also happy with a couple of others, but I'm going to talk you through those, why some worked and why some didn't. Let's get into it. As you can see, as I entered the park here, we've just got some really nice lighting straight away. So as I'm taking this picture, I'm shooting handheld because it's, sometimes it's easy to do compositions, but we'll be using the tripod in a bit as well. I'm just caught by this light that's coming in from the right hand side, sweeping over the path. But at the same time, I'm very aware that this isn't going to be the best lighting angle. And so this was the first picture I took and I thought it was okay, but I really knew what I needed to do straight away, which is to turn around and face the other direction. So I walked on a little bit, just past those trees, and then I saw this when I looked back. So what I'm doing is when I'm shooting handheld like this, I'm trying to position the sun in just the right location. So I'm, as you can see, I'm zooming in and out and I'm looking at my histogram as well to try and get the exposure right because I'm trying not to crush the shadows. I want to try and get this in one shot handheld. I don't mind if some of the area around the sun blows out a bit. But as you can see, as I'm moving the camera over to the side, the, the light's getting blocked out by the tree. So I'm bringing my shot back over to the right hand side to try and just have the light peeling around the tree like this, which I think looks really nice. And you can see further down the path and lower part of the screen that the light's hitting the path along the way, which looks just gives it a lot of drama, a lot of mood. It's going to feel quite romantic, I think. I'm focusing on the, the second tree that you can see. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm, I'm shooting at about F10 for this. ISO is 400, and I think it's about a 30th of a second. And that's giving me, as you can see on the histogram, I'm just making sure I'm not crushing those shadow areas because the 5D Mark II doesn't have tons of dynamic range. And here is the final picture that I got from it, and I was super happy with this. In fact, I was going as far as to say this could even be a portfolio shot for me. I'm going to print this out really big, and I'll, I'll show you guys that at some point in the future soon. But I was really pleased with the way this picture came out. It just had all of the drama and mood that I really wanted from this kind of a picture. Here what I saw with this light coming through this cluster of trees and I just wasn't sure whether this was going to work so well because the grouping of trees was quite tight. It felt quite nice when I was shooting it and I thought this might work quite well. Let's give it a go and see what comes out from it. So I'm just focusing on the cluster of trees that's in front of me here. As you can see I've got my three exposures and this is how it came out. I thought it was okay but for me this isn't quite really up to standard. So it's not something that I'll keep, but it was at least enjoyable to shoot it. And you've got to experiment and try these things out because if you don't try, then you don't know. Now this picture is really just a personal shot that I wanted to do because I really love this large pine forest, uh, with these huge trees here. So the composition that was framing up was giving a lot of weight to the trees themselves. I could have made the path go off into the corner of the picture, but sometimes I think that that as a composition right. just looked too obvious. So that's why I'm not letting it come in from the exact corner, because I think that when we do do shots where we're so obviously trying to make a path come from the corner, it can at times just look a bit sort of cheesy, I suppose, that's one way of looking at it. But I, want, I really wanted a wide picture of this. So for me, this shot's going to be a keeper, but it's not something that would go into my portfolio. This is the kind of picture that I would keep for myself because it really captures the mood of this place very well for me. It's slightly damper and colder in this part of the forest but with these huge trees like this, and uh, I really love this area. But I had to make a decision at this point, and it was a case of, do I carry on into the forest where I know there's no light because the trees are going to be blocking it? Or do I retrace some of my steps and try to find some other compositions? And as I've been walking away from the sun, um, I'd been into the forest more to take the last picture. I had that nagging feeling that there were a couple of compositions, perhaps, that I had missed, um, and that it was going to be a decision between 
Do I go into an area of really flat light in the forest, or do I try and make something more out of this uh, amazing sunset? And I thought, yes, I've got to go back and make sure I get this sunset like this. And this is, I guess, one of those tips that I can give you for shooting in forest areas, is try to stick to paths that are near the edge of a forest, where it's just fields on the outside, because you will then at least be able to get lighting like this. Because as soon as you take a few steps into the forest, it just disappears because it's all blocked out by the trees. So staying close to the edges is a really good idea because that's the way you're going to get light and that's the way forest photos are going to look interesting. So I'm shooting a, a bracketed exposure here at a pretty wide angle because I want to try to get the full effect of the trees in the forest here with these different types of trees around. And I was pretty happy with this. Now I know the path is slightly off to the right, but you know, in this instance, I really don't care. I think it just works really nicely because it's got that big tree on the left in there. And this was a case of having what I want versus, um, you know, maybe a slightly more perfect composition. But I was pretty pleased with this shot. But as I was coming down the path again, um, this is one of those things where you have to really look at what's in front of you, like see what it is that's grabbing your attention. I can feel that there's a shot coming up again. But I'm making a mistake here initially um, and that is that I, the sun is kind of coming through but it's not strong enough it's hidden by that tree as you can see like the GoPro is catching bits of it but there's not really quite enough of it here and as I'm taking the picture I'm looking at the back of the camera and I can see how dark the ground is in front of me but I can also see that there's not much that's actually being caught by the light there's nothing it hasn't got that extra factor of something where I think I really want it to be like this, this is exactly what I was after. I'm not really feeling it that much, even in the brighter exposure as I'm doing the sort of triple bracketing. Um, it's just not quite got it, and I think that I need to move a little bit closer into the light, and it doesn't take much, and there it hits me. And you can see as I react immediately to that, that I'm thinking, ah, oh, that's it, that's the shot I was trying to get a moment ago. So it's okay to experiment and try things out, but as long as you're realizing you're thinking all the time. So as I'm setting up, the camera here, I'm even walking forwards with it with the tripod open to make sure that I'm getting my framing exactly where I want it to be. And it's quite misty and I think that the, the way the light's coming through is, is creating that kind of drama um, with the colder air and so on. And it just looks really fantastic. And so it's again uh, a triple, it's a bracketed exposure again so I can combine the images to make sure I've got enough detail in the shadow areas because the 5D Mark II doesn't have tons of dynamic range and I'm just checking my exposures, I'm looking at my histograms am I preserving my highlights, am I preserving my shadow areas for the final picture uh, as you can see it's just literally left and right tells you your darkest and lightest and that's all I need to know and this is the final picture <laughs> I was very happy with this picture as well because it managed to capture some of that eeriness that the forest has around here. And just as we roll this last bit of video here, what I wanted you to see is just how, as the sun's gone over the horizon, all of the colour and all the drama has just disappeared. You could always help me out by buying me a coffee. The links are in the description down below. It would be much appreciated and it really helps this channel. Also, check out my website. I'll leave a link in the description where you can see some of my other work and also some of my presets that I've got for sale. And don't forget to subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it and drop me a comment and I'll try and get back to you. I'll see you again in the next video. Take care, bye bye.